turn the light on. Oh, yeah, you got it. This is the Rife Research Laboratory in Point Loma. This is this is Royal R. Rife, the research scientist of this laboratory. Here are views of the Rife Research Laboratory at Point Loma, California. This is narrated by John Crane, <coughs> the principal scientist in this laboratory was Royal R. Rife, R-I-F-E, <coughs> who has worked in research on cancer and many other diseases from 1920 to 1942. <coughs> this uh, is the chemical apparatus of the laboratory, part of it. The cultures are in this uh, cabinet, which had to be protected from the radiation of the electromagnetic energy developed by Rife's ray tube instruments. There were many sterilizers in the laboratory, one being 15 feet long for the sterilization of glassware and other research items. These are hot water steam heaters. There was a complete machine shop in the laboratory for tool work, making microscopes, and uh, providing any of the facilities needed for the research. This, this research was sponsored by the Rife Virus Microscope Institute by Life Lab Incorporated and by the John F. Crane Corporation set up for continuing Rife's research. Every room was completed in itself. Nothing was taken from one room to another. Rife was a world traveler and a great marksman. He had 40 of the most beautiful guns made in those days. <coughs> this is Rife's office, his desk. This is a vault where he kept some radium and other valuable materials used in the experiments on cancer. Rife had about 1,000 albino rats in the basement, which he used to grow tumors from a virus he isolated, a cancer virus, which was isolated and injected into the rats. <coughs> These are steam sterilizers in a sterilization room. This is a surgery room in which the glassware and other uh, surgery items were used in the operations on the rats by Rife. This is the main surgery table where the rats, the rats were, or the other animals were, were operated on. <coughs> These are pictures of the surgical instruments used by Rife. Rife was assisted by many MDs that worked with him during this research. This is the optical room in which the microscopes and the optical, the Leitz optical bench is shown in the background with his universal 
microscope, the Rife microscope published by the Smithsonian Institution and the Franklin Institute. This was one of five instruments that Rife designed and built with the help of his colleagues. This is a million volt x-ray. This is a stop motion photomicrograph machine that was used to make uh, delayed versions of the growing of flowers or the growing of viruses and growing of plants, the growing of worms, which are all recorded. This is a Ascania research camera, 35 millimeter, that Rife used in his work. And this is a number two microscope, a virus microscope, was a, a prismat, prismatic instrument. And this is a number three universal microscope, prismatic type. That embodied all fields of microscopy, including dark field, polarized, uh, polarized light, infrared light, ultraviolet light, and monochromatic beam light. The indicator dial moved around seven times to move the object up and down one micron. And it was a very sensitive instrument. The uh, ocular that you see on the left side in the middle of the instrument, when that was in, plugged in, made it a standard microscope. <clears throat> now in isolating cancer virus in 1931, Rife took an ulcerated human breast mass from the Paradise Valley Sanitarium donated by Dr. R.T. Hamer, who was assistant superintendent of the Paradise Valley Sanitarium and Hospital. Portions of this tumor were cut out and uh, filtered through a triple-aught porcelain Birkfeldt filter, which gave about 10 micron uh, filtration. The virus could readily pass through a filter of this degree of closeness. The test tubes that are in, that are used are shown here are irradiated for 24 hours with neon argon or krypton gas, in which, like a fluorescent light, the radiation caused the virus to become virulent. Rife could then grow tumors in weeks instead of months in the art without this radiation. The test tubes were placed in a water, two-inch water vacuum and uh, irradiated for 24 hours as they progressed up the test tube holder. Everything is flamed to sterilize the bacteria, to sterilize the cotton that held it and the, and the uh, solutions. Every time uh, one uh, test tube disappears, it means that there's an elapsed time of 24 hours between the radiation of the, the lights. The <clears throat> this shows some of the uh, experimental animals in the basement. Rife had over a thousand animals, mostly albano rats. The rats were injected with a very tiny needle from the virus that he had filtered and isolated. And the tumors would be allowed to grow to be two or three times, two or three grams heavier than the rat. These are some of the rats that you see now. Rife had men that, about 12 men that worked in this laboratory to keep everything spotlessly clean, sterilized. <clears throat> the next picture shows the injecting of the cancer virus 
in the rat. The mammary gland was used of the rat because it came out of the mam mammary gland of a human breast mass. The rat was given a partial anesthesia to avoid the shock of the needle and the virus was injected in the rat. The point of the injection is shown in the forward part of the rat. Rife would then allow the cancer tumors to grow. And uh, there you can see the tumor in the rat. He would surgically remove the tumor and treat the rat with his ray tube instruments, which frequencies would devitalize the cancer virus without harm to the human or the animal cells of the rat. Reif used high-powered glasses for his operations in order to get down to fine details of the removal. The tumor is tied off and cut away in which the cancer virus can again be isolated from that tumor and then and going into other rats uh, with the injections of, of over 400 times to prove that the, the virus that he isolated was the cause of the cancer tumor. Now this shows a tumor coming out of triple distilled water and a portion of that tumor is being cut away so that you can observe the cancer virus under Rife's microscopes. Rife had the only microscopes in the world that could see the cancer virus or any other virus alive and he studied them for years which is all recorded in the polarity research manual in the first section called electron therapy. Everything that you see is triple distilled this is triple distilled water going in. He's going to gently grind up the cancer tumor to extract the virus. This is a Birkfeld filter, porcelain filter, similar to Dresden China unglazed. The liquid material is poured into the test tube and a drop is removed from that liquid <coughs> which Rife will shortly place on a slide which has been sterilized with flame. The liquid material is withdrawn from a micro pipette made by Rife into the solution and a drop is placed on the slide and covered with a cover slip made of quartz. Rife used quartz slides because the light passed through better than glass. Now the ray tube is above Rife's head which will be turned on later to kill the virus. The instrument is to the left of Rife, the black instrument, which is a ray tube instrument. It consists of being a transmitter and an audio oscillator in which Rife could tune the frequencies which he knew would kill the virus, just like a voice would crack a glass. Now these are the first pictures ever made of the cancer virus. These uh, cancer uh, materials were motile, streamlined shapes like a fish, which 
Rife said would travel at speeds of 400 miles per hour if, it, if the comparable distance were measured on, in an ordinary air. This is an air bubble coming in from the right hand side of the slide because the slide was not sealed. Our rifle will now turn on the right tube instrument, which will activate the light. It'll have a little flash, and that'll be all it is to kill all the virus in the room. It's just on for a few seconds. This uh, this instrument, this ray tube instrument, had a capacity of 500 watts which would transmit this energy 10 to 12 miles in the whole, around the whole area. And this shows the virus after it's been treated with the ray tube instruments, which has a resonant frequency that killed the virus, and they're all clumped together, agglutinating in the field. This, this shows the ray colors, I mean, the, not the colors, but the ray emanations. You'll see the colors pretty soon. The lethal frequencies of the electromagnetic emanations are shown here in these first slides ever made of oscilloscope patterns, which were shown in the Detroit Electronic Convention in 1942. The spikes of these frequencies are primarily the killers of the virus, which actually the internal energy is built up in the virus and they just disintegrate into pieces. So there's no, no life left to, to uh, grow again. The, uh, Various frequencies that can be generated by an oscillator, audio oscillator are put on a carrier wave in the diathermy range, which ranges from 13 million cycles per second up to 42 million cycles per second. And this shows the amplification of the signal going into the carrier wave, and the slower frequencies now are being shown which they can be varied with harmonics and other square wave waveforms that were later found to be much more effective than sine wave or triangular wave or other waveforms that have been tried for years. This is an Abrams oscillator, a deadbeat oscillator that generated the frequencies which you see here for the spikes coming up to kill the cancer virus or any other virus. Worms were also devitalized up to 10 feet long with a few seconds treatment. Rife tested Abrams on deadbeat oscillator and found that it worked also in addition to his own electromagnetic energy systems. This research has all been suppressed by the American Medical Association by Morris Fishbein who also tried to suppress all of the reports and scientific publications from the Rife Research Laboratory. The principal publications of the, of the microscope and of the research on cancer and many other diseases was published by the Smithsonian Institution and by the Franklin Institute in 1944. Copies of this document will be made available for any person wishing to secure one. Rife was uh, 
demonstrating here that five frequencies could be put on the same carrier wave, which was unheard of at that time. The person that benefited from this was a telephone company, uh, and today I understand they're using over a hundred frequencies on the same carrier wave. This work was in conjunction with Coolidge of General Electric who furnished the ray tubes. This is a picture of the interior of the laboratory of John F. Crane in San Diego. Years later, in which the instruments were set up again to do further research from 1950 to the present time. This was an optical bench, uh, Bosch and Lone, for studying the telegraph work and al also bacteria work. This is a Leeds optical bench in which the microscope could be put over that. It could be either horizontal or vertical and was mounted on springs so it would be free of the earth shocks. This is a petrographical micropolariscope used by Rife for chemical analysis and for observation of the bacteria and virus which was transmitted up through the 40 inch bellows of the Leeds optical bench so that photomicrographs could be made of the bacteria and other entities. This is a number two microscope this is a number four microscope built by Rife and his assistants. Rife was a great uh, machinist, had a tool and die maker with, working with him at all times. These are the controls of the instrument. That's a fine adjustment and the course adjustment on the top and the back. I'm demonstrating these controls to see them. This instrument was a loop which was wound for the neon or argon or krypton or xenon gases so that the test tubes could provide radiation to get the cancer virus virulent. This is a kind of rotating Risley prism in which the, the rays of the light were transmitted up through the instrument to stain the virus with the frequency of light. Now this is a view of the close-up view of the universal Rife Universal Microscope showing the dark field illuminator on the right side which swung down into position for dark field illumination of syphilis bacteria and other dark field bacteria. Rife researched all, all of the bacteria, including Streptococcus, Staphylococcus, Streptothrix, leprosy, tuberculosis, gonorrhea, Streptothrix, and many other diseases. The microscope was also used for measuring the angles of crystals in crystallography. As you can see, it can be rotated through three planes, and the slide can be moved back and forth, up and down, in or in and out, and whatever angle it needed to be measured could be measured with a protractor indicator on the back of the, the microscope at the top which was also coordinated with the angles of the movements that you just saw. The lights underneath the base of the microscope could be moved back and forth to, to use different types of light, such as 
infrared, ultraviolet, monochromatic beam light, and any other light that was desired. The microscope well, had prisms and it went through both sides of it. This is the patented right rife uh, microscope lamp, which took an ordinary automobile 21 candle power bulb and boosted it up to 1200 candle power with the uh, reflector on the bottom, which you see there, and the condenser lens at the top of the unit. This is a Van Leeuwenhoek uh, hanging drop microscope, first developed in around 1600 by a Dutchman in, uh, in Europe, in which you could see uh, large bacteria like paramecium and other units of microorganisms. This is the orig original research instrument which changed the ohms from 100,000 ohms to a million ohms in steps of one ohm to vary the frequencies used in this ray tube which you're seeing here now. This is the inside of the ray tube activated by 8,000 volts in which helium gas was used to cause the radiation to kill the virus of cancer and other viruses. This is a standard x-ray tube converted with the helium gas so that it could be used and this shows the change in the resonant frequencies to get different intensities of the light. Now we're going back to the original photomicrograph of the cancer virus and then the new one that I, that I patented, I mean that I copyrighted in 1955 it was. Now this is a bacteria called typhoid, the cell is typhosis, in which the bacteria has three virus, one at the bottom which you see, one at the side, and one at the top. When the polarity is negative in the body, the virus remain in the bacteria, but when, <clears throat> I mean, when it gets too negative, they're compressed and they're, they're ex extruded from the bacteria. When it's positive, well, they remain in the bacteria and there's no disease. The feelers are shown on the lower right-hand portion of this uh, picture. That's done with a stain that Rife developed to show the feelers. This was a dinner meeting at Dr. Milbank Johnson, M.D.'s home in Pasadena, honoring Rife and Dr. Arthur I. Kendall of Northwestern University Medical School. And this is the 40 doctors that, that attended that dinner. And they had the Dr. Rufus Von Klein-Smith, president of USC, was there. And his uh, university was used to sponsor the clinic in 1934, which cured 16 hopeless cancer cases. These pictures were taken after Rife passed away in 1972, showing the universal microscope again. Lower portion of it. That's one of the six ray tube instruments that were built by Allied Industries, which I owned. And these instruments were built by Kennedy of San Francisco in 1920. This microscope I designed and built for projection of the viruses, bacteria, and worms, and so on, on a slide 10 feet away. It also has a front screen, which you can see the, the uh, rule gratings for being projected on the front screen. <coughs> This projection microscope is available at 10,000 a piece. <clears throat> One of these instruments is used in the Los Angeles area now in 
research. The digital control on the right, <coughs> lower right, is for getting back to precision locations, up and down, and vertical locations, so that slides can be put in and out and focused very rapidly. Here we go. Okay. This shows the projection microscope with a test uh, lens in the center of it, which can see the <coughs> filament of the light and bring the entire system into focus for projection to a screen 10 foot away. This is a patent drawing, which is upside down, of the microscope, one of the first projection microscopes built, which shows the various optical projection systems. This is an external view of the projection microscope outside on the sidewalk. This is a patent drawing of the projection microscope showing the Risley prism to the left side which can focus in the different colors of, of light so that the viruses can be stained in their own characteristic chemical resonant colors the internal view of the microscope and the patented rife lamp below is shown to bring the system up to the top where a movie camera or a, a uh, other projection system can be used to enlarge the images up to 200,000 times. The eyepiece shown there is can be looking can be looking into the image and also see it or it can be seen on a ground glass which covers the top of the instrument which eliminates empty magnification this means that everything that's projected up can be seen on the view plate This is an external view of the first uh, projection microscope, which is now in use here in San Diego by an MD for his own private research. <coughs> this is a front view of the instrument showing the dial on the left hand side which operates two twin jack screws that move the microscope up and down to bring the object into focus. This is a rear view of the same instrument showing the, the belt that's uh, connecting the two jack screws. Now this is a test set up on the Leitz optical bench showing the, uh, the optical system which can be projected to test out the various optical components. And this is another external view of the projection microscope with a six inch barrel which has locations at the top of the barrel for three eyepieces or a camera which can be inserted and the images reviewed or seen. Uh, this is a, another patent drawing showing the optical path of the uh, light from the base to the top 
which is projected on up by the condenser lenses, the optical uh, oculars, and the, the eyepieces, or projected on out with a special mirror which goes to a screen 10 foot away. It could also go to a television camera which would increase the power another 10,000 times. This is a picture again of the <coughs> Rife Research Virus Microscope for to see the cancer virus, TB virus, and many other viruses which Rife recorded in my book called Electron Therapy, which is available for for sale in uh, polarity in the polarity research manual. Uh, this instrument was designed for uh, controlling bacteria in oil and gasoline, in which the U.S. government had about $300 million in storage tanks in several places around the world, which had to be replaced every three months. Uh, this instrument could kill the bacteria in the fuel so that the replacement would be, not be necessary. President Nixon reviewed this system and decided for the oil companies that there would never be anything like this ever allowed to be used. So the citizens of this United States could keep on paying 300 million every quarter. And uh, further details of this will be shown in this next slide, which shows a screen, a stainless steel screen inside of a plastic tube in which the electrodes were placed in the screen, one in the center of it and one on the outside of it so that anything passing through that area would be devitalized. Now this, this instrument could go up to 100 volts but uh, only 4 or 5 volts was necessary. The the fluid that came from the, from the storage tanks was pumped through this devitalizer and on back into the storage tanks again. Another uh, setup was made to kill the viruses and, and bacteria in chickens. Uh, this was made for the U.S. Department of Agriculture uh, secretary Butts was the principal secretary at the time, and his uh, research lab was over in uh, March Field near Riverside, California. And uh, th these, uh, the system was set up to be used inside the chicken cages. They just slid in, and the wires that you see were made of aluminum. The frequency instrument goes in the background to generate frequencies which would be lethal to the viruses that the chickens were being affected with from living in unhealthy conditions. Upon uh, delivery of this unit to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, they immediately saw that it was electronic and uh, after being apprised of that fact, they, they, did, they refused to allow any research to be done because they were working with drugs only on instructions from Secretary Butts. And uh, all of this work in preparing this uh, experiment was in vain by John Crane. The chickens destroyed were destroyed at the rate of about 25,000 a month because of this virus condition. Oh, yeah. That's it. All right.